was needs coming on. <coughs> there it is. Hello, parsley worm. I'm realizing that I'm low on my quinacridone magenta, so I'm just gonna refill that. that. That's all that's left in the half pan, so I'm thinking we're probably gonna need a little bit more than that. Hello, I must not talk in class. so pretty. Look at that. Oops, sorry. Hi, Meredith. Hello, Scarlet Soleil. Welcome, welcome. It's been a little while since we last life. Look at that. The wet paint is really beautiful. That's Coors Quinacridone Magenta. And I'm really excited that I had the chance to fill that up before we start. Okay. Let me get in my seat here. I'm gonna wave. Get myself all situated here. Well, hello, welcome. Welcome back. Um, if you've been following this account for over a year, which I think most of you guys have, you'll remember that we used to do this every week. And then uh, we took a little break over the summer. Summer got a little busy, and so I took a step back from live streaming. But then at the beginning of this year, as we went into the new year, um, I began thinking about yeah, goals for the year and some things that I wanted to get back to and live streaming was at the top of the list and so I'm really excited to be getting back into that tonight. We'll see how I do. I'm not much of a night owl, uh, but um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited to be back and hanging out with you guys and painting. Um, so I think, hello, Mrs. Brad79. Um, when we used to do regularly regular weekly live streams, uh, I like to have like a neat packaged little topic to to teach on, and I think for the time being it's gonna be a little bit more this time around of just kind of painting what I would normally be painting if there weren't a camera, and just having the camera on and talking as I'm going. So tonight, um, I'm going to be. Uh, learning or teaching myself how to paint some pomegranates, which is uh, just a wonderful and delicious fruit. And um, it's actually an element that I'm hoping to incorporate into a spoonflower pattern that I'm working on. Um, but it's also a fruit that I've never painted before. So um, it'll be fun to learn. This will definitely be less me teaching you how to paint a pomegranate and more me teaching myself how to do this and talking as I go. So you're welcome to paint along or you're welcome to just listen and hang out. Um, either way, I'm glad you're here. So let's see. I'm going to mix up some color. I've got on my laptop um, a Google image search for pomegranates and also a Pinterest search because it's just kind of two different pools of images, reference images to look through. And that's usually what I do. Oh, I just got 
Oh, I was hoping this would come through. Okay, I'm gonna try this. So I've really missed having music in the background of uh, these live streams because A, I think it's probably really boring to listen to silence if I'm not talking. And B, um, I tend to lose focus if I don't have sound going on in the background. So I just heard back from a wonderful YouTuber named uh, Nomadic Ambiance on YouTube. You should definitely go uh, check out their videos. And I just got permission from them to play um, some of their kind of ambient sound in the background of this live stream. So let me see if I can get that working. You will hear... Oh, hold on a minute. Laptop did not realize that I wanted sound. This is, you know, just the technical aspect of coming back. While my computer's rebooting, I'm gonna go ahead and mix some color for our pomegranates. So I've got Coors uh, Alizarin Crimson and Quinacridone Magenta that I'm mixing just as a starting place. And isn't, yeah, it's such a gorgeous color. That uh, Quinacridone Magenta is actually the first, I think I still have the sample card that I got from um, Jerry's Artarama. Actually, my mom, I must not talk in class, picked it up for me from Jerry's Artarama. Do I still have it? Uh, I don't see it right offhand, but... Quinacridone Magenta was one of the first core colors that I got to sample, and I just fell in love with it. Okay, let's try this again. Ambient sound. I don't know if you guys are big, like, ASMR listeners, but I, I do listen to some ASMR stuff when I'm working or meditating. So this one has some birds and city sounds. We'll see how that goes. It's just gonna be a little bit of experiment, I think, over the next few times that we paint together to play with the format and find out what works. So let me go back to my reference pictures. And I think before I paint an open pomegranate with all of the uh, all of the seeds or the air aerials, how do you pronounce that? Inside of it, I wanna do a closed one, like a one with the peel still on. And as I'm looking at the color, I'm realizing I think I need to put some more red in there. And my hope for this kind of study of the fruit is just to paint it a few different ways, maybe in a few different styles, and hopefully by the end just have a better handle on how these things are put together than I did before. Okay, I like that red. But actually, I'm going to start out because I'm looking at my reference picture and I'm noticing that the very top of the fruit is actually a little bit yellowish brown, so I'm going to pull out my quinacridone gold and start with that. Let's see if I scoot this down, can you still see? So yeah, these sounds are from Nomadic Ambiance on YouTube, and I'm very grateful for them letting me use their sound tonight, because already I'm feeling a little bit more focused. Okay, so pomegranates have this kind of spiky top that I'm just going to roughly draw out with my brush. Let me know if there's anything I need to do to change this so you can see a little bit better. So I'm just going to wash this out. And as I go down in this kind of stem shape, I'm gonna start working in my red color. That might be a little too much. 
And just kind of pull that out on either side. Hi, Morgan Dowler. I would wave to you, but I've got a brush in my hand. So I'm just pulling out this shape into more of the rounded pomegranate shape. And as all natural things go, when you're painting something that comes from nature, it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical um, or pristine. I'm just getting a vaguely rounded shape on this, leaving a few white spots, maybe to suggest some light reflecting in. So I've got my base color there, and I think I want to tap into the bottom just a little more of that alizarin crimson, just to give it kind of a three-dimensional that there's shadow hitting the bottom of this shape. Give it lots of water so that pigment can work itself around. And I'll come back and add a little bit more detail after that first layer dries. Hi, Nancy W411. Let's do another one of those before we move on to the open ones. I feel like I'm still just getting a feel for how these are put together. Apologies for wobbling the camera stand. So again, we've got the spiky spikes at the top. And right now I'm basically just copying what I see in the photo. Once I feel a little bit more comfortable with this, we'll definitely go back and uh, take a few more tries with some, some more style on them. So then it's got this kind of chunky stem. Again, I'm kind of leaving some sections uh, white. I'm not really thinking too hard about where the light's hitting it, just kind of where it feels right to put white sections. Mix a little bit more of that color. Got a ton of pigment there because the paint is still really, really wet, so hopefully that'll last us a while. What watercolors are these? These are uh, Core, Q-O-R, uh, from Golden Paints. The Q-O-R stands for Quality of Results, and I love them a lot because uh, they're really, really bright. And, um, hi, Honey Myrtle Studio. Uh, they move really well on the paper, as you can see, and they've just got a really nice pigment to them. So I'm going back and forth between my mixed color and my... Um, uh, the paints in my half pans. And I think as I'm feeling out the colors for these, I might try a few different things. So some may look a little more pink and some may look a little more red or orange. We'll just kind of go with what we feel like as we try to get a handle on this. Hi, Jillian Kirkpatrick. You should know that I have a history of uh, mispronouncing usernames. So if I get any of yours wrong, I'm sorry. I want to see if I can tap a little bit of this gold into the body of the pomegranate and just see what happens there. If I can work that color. Jill is fine. That works great, Jill. I'm noticing that some of these pomegranates have a little um, maybe yellow color on the flesh of them, maybe where uh, there's like kind of a difference in ripening. And so I want to just work that in with my watercolor a little bit. I think I like the deeper red on the left one better, so that's telling me I probably need to work a little more alizarin crimson into my mix here. I think of pomegranates as being uh, really vibrant and luxurious, and uh, they have a really strong flavor, so I think that makes me want to paint them in really strong colors as well. 
So again, just tapping some pigment into the bottom of this. Using some water to let that kind of blend itself out. I tend to go really, really wet on my first layer and just let the colors do whatever and then come back with some dry layers for more detail. So I'll come back to those two. Let's be brave and try and open one. Let me find a good, good picture here. Okay, this looks good. So yeah, I love talking about the cores because I feel like they're really actually underrepresented on art Instagram. I don't see a lot of artists talk about them, which is a shame because I really enjoy them. And um, I think they're really beautiful to work with. <laughs> Already, my paint water is this color. <laughs> I may have to change it before the evening's out. Move my mixing tray over there for the moment. So I think I want to sketch out the inside of this so if you've seen a pomegranate you'll know that it has kind of this pale flesh that holds the um the seeds or the seed pods inside so i want to just really water down my gold and just start loosely sketching out with my brush even that's too pigmented start sketching out with my brush the inside of this pomegranate leaving room for sections of seeds and we'll see maybe there's a better approach later on that we can take but i'm just kind of loosely deciding kind of where the inside and of course even when you cut it open you still have these spikes so I'm just kind of narrating what I'm seeing in my reference photos. Trying to use that to inform. I'm using a lot more yellow than I thought I would actually in painting these fruits that are known for being a very different color. So I'm just gonna go around the outside. Maybe there's another like section right there for seeds. Kind of snakes around. I want to tap just I'm going to tweak the edge of this just a little bit. I realize I need to speak up and actually say what I'm doing. There we go. That might not make a difference to you, but it makes all the difference to me. <laughs> so I'm going to grab a little bit of my mixed color. And just tap that into where the stem is, maybe get a little sharper line on that, just let it bleed, that we're kind of seeing the intersection of where the outside and the inside are meeting. Yeah, just using the very tip of my brush to get some sharper detail on those spikes. And then maybe I'll take this around the outside, leaving some space for where I painted the inside. Hello, Aleha Restrepo Goose. That's my best shot. And it's okay if this touches the inside a little bit and bleeds into the inside. As I'm looking at my reference picture, there are definitely some places where the uh, the skin and the, uh, the inside flesh overlap. So if this side is closer to us, it's gonna be a little wider where we can see the peel, where the fruit is cut open. I actually really love how that bleeding looks. And then I'll do a very thin stripe on the other side. Just to say there is a little bit of peel here, but we can't see it as much. Maybe break that line a little bit. Hi there, I love your drawings. Oh, thank you very much.
Let's see, while that first layer dries, let's go back up to uh, our other guys here and add just a little bit more color. So I'm thinking, there's my alizarin crimson. I'm thinking I wanna add some dry alizarin crimson just at the base of these stems right here to kind of show, hey, there's a little bit of depth maybe where the light is uh, not as visible. Uh, on that, I think it covers up the bleed a little bit. What if we, this is just experimenting and playing here. Hi, Whitney Sims Studio. What if we take this excess color and use it to kind of make a little outline on the spikies? That's the very technical term for this. I don't hate that. Hi, MA36FH. So yeah, usually when I'm doing studies and learning how to draw something new, it's just very experimental like this. I'm gonna take some color right here and kind of show that maybe this is the darker side of the fruit. Blend it into where it's wet down here. I'll wave it to you guys real quick. So yeah, there's kind of no right or wrong way to draw something. Just playing around and seeing what looks uh, fun and still recognizably like the... Mysterious is the dark side of the fruit. Mysterious as the dark side of... Now you're going to have... Uh, I'll make a man out of you stuck in my head. So I'm going to do the same thing and take some crimson in here. It's bleeding, but I like how that blend looks. And a little more color down here. What if we splattered on this one? So the way I do splatters is to get my brush very wet with color. And then to hold it down close to my painting, take my fingers flat like this and just tap my brush against my fingers to create kind of a vibration. And I don't mind that at all. I'm, I'm not mad at that in the least. Sorry, camera's out of focus. I think I'm gonna do that on the other one actually. I think that really captures, because if you start trying to uh, do stuff with a pomegranate, this is what will happen to your kitchen counter. There will be uh, juice everywhere, but it's very delicious and very much worth it. I'm going to come back over to this guy. I think it's dry enough that we can start to do some stuff to it. I just want to add some darker spots to this peel that I created on the outside. And this is not really like a formal lighting thing. I have to teach classes at a boutique soon. Oh, so cool! So I am watching you teach... Oh, thank you so much, Whitney. I'm glad you're liking how these are turning out. I hope that your teaching goes really well uh, and that you have a great time with your students. Okay, I'm gonna be brave here and try to start painting in these seeds. I've been saving them for last because I'm a little intimidated by them, but let's just jump right in. So the thing I love about pomegranates is that the inside um, seed pods are basically the same color as the peel. So I'm just gonna use this same color to start painting in the pods here. And I'm gonna leave a little light on some of them because they are really shiny. Maybe some of them stick together. Some of them are different sizes. Maybe there's more space between some. And they kind of cluster together in these little holes that I made in the, uh, in the flesh here. And I really like also making some that are just an outline like this and then making others that are kind of solid color. It kind of uh, breaks up those shapes and keeps them from bleeding together too much, which I think uh, makes it a little bit easier to figure out what it is. I 
I'm actually really pleased with how this is turning out. Okay, let's move over to another section. Of course, I painted the right-hand section first, so now I've got to, like, awkwardly... I wonder if I could turn this a little bit so that I'm not sticking my hand in wet paint. Okay, we're still in the shot. That's bleeding a little bit, that's totally fine. This is just a very messy study to get a handle on how these are put together. Maybe some are facing different directions. Yeah, based on this photo, it looks like they're all just kind of clustered in together. What paper are you using? I'm using Canson 140 pound um, cold press watercolor paper, which is uh, very inexpensive and I use it uh, for just about everything. Um, I also really like Windsor and Newton's cold press watercolor paper, but for studies and um, things where I'm just trying to play a little bit more, uh, I like the Canson. Looking amazing. Thank you, Morgan. Did you attend school for art? If so, where? No, I did not attend school for art. I did go to college. My uh, degree is in education. Um, but then when I finished college and knew that I wanted to be an artist, uh, I was already seeing a lot of people that I really admired uh, who didn't go to art school uh, doing their thing. And so I thought I'd give it a try. And um, so far it's going really well. I should say, though, that I've learned a lot from a lot of amazing teachers on Skillshare and in books and um, just from relationships that I've gotten to form online. And so um, while I did not go to art school, I'm also definitely not self-taught. I've learned a lot from other people. I'm loving that ambient noise. I think that's working out really well. So we just got one section to go. What are the things that you love to paint the most? That's a really good question. Well, um, I love painting food. <laughs> Ever since I've joined They Draw and Cook, and previous to that, I've loved painting food and fruit, which I guess is apt because we're doing that right now. Um, yeah, I just really love food. <laughs> and so I think when I'm painting food, I tend to do like my most passionate drawings because I'm, I'm drawing something I really love. So food, uh, closely followed by people, I think are my two favorite things to draw. If I could only draw like one subject for the rest of time, it would be food. Um, and then if I got to pick two, it would be food and people. <laughs> So cool. I'm attending Baylor University in the fall, majoring in interior design. Congratulations! I have been interested in art education, but I like the more mature aspects of design. That's super cool. Yeah, I think um, there are just so many opportunities for art and design out there, which I think is funny because there's this idea out there that there are no opportunities for artists or designers. But in reality, there are so many different things you can do with skills in art and design. Um, like interior design or like textile or product design, graphic design. So good for you. I think that's awesome. This is very um, relaxing to do because it's just kind of repetitive and intuitive. I'm really enjoying that. I think after I wrap this up, I am going to call it done, even though that feels so short for a live stream. Just because it's our first one back, I want to pace a little bit. But I could honestly keep going all night if I uh, didn't have the self-control to. I 
Oh, one thing I was meaning to ask you guys, this is unrelated to pomegranates at all, is I'm wondering if any of you guys have seen the movie Parasite, because I can't stop thinking about it, and I just want to know what you think, if you have any takes on that. It's looking incredible, realistic yet stylistic. Thank you, Meredith. That's really nice. I kind of wish there were a little more separation between these two sections. I feel like maybe I could have pulled back on that, but it's all part of the learning process. So yeah, I saw Parasite a couple uh, a week ago now, and um, I don't want to spoil anything by telling you a whole lot about it, but it's really fun and really scary, and the actors in it are really good. And... Uh, yeah, the hype, the hype is worth it. Hi, Madeline Bullen. Fancy seeing you here. Gonna link those together. And I think I wanna do a splatter on this too. Fun? Question mark? Or you're asking about Parasite? Yeah, it's fun. It's, I mean, you know, it makes you think, and it's definitely more um, maybe intellectually stimulating than uh, enjoyable, at least on your first watch. But I think there are definitely some fun moments in it, and it's fun talking with people about it afterwards. So yeah, fun is a word I would use. I stand by that. And I hope it wins Best Picture. I'm calling it now. Parasite for Best Picture. So I'm just getting, yeah, I saw Parasite as well. Don't you think trailer gave you another impression about how it will be? Um, I think they really wanted to keep the second half of the movie under wraps. Yeah, so if you were going in thinking that the first half of the movie was how the whole movie was going to be, you would definitely be surprised and maybe not in a good way. Um, I read the entire plot synopsis before I went to see it because I hate being scared or surprised in the movies. So I kind of knew what to expect, but I can definitely see for others who uh, went in completely cold that it would be uh, a bit of a shock. Okay, let's turn this back around so we can see all three. Well, for first takes, I'm really pleased with how that's looking. They're super wet. I wonder if I could take my brush and just add a little bit more detail to this guy. I'm also definitely not into like scary or violent movies. I kind of closed my eyes for the last 15 minutes of the movie. Um, but then looking back on it, there's a lot that sticks with you and there's a lot that makes you think. Just kind of painting some more spikes over here. I'm kind of have to be, if I had more time to wait, I would probably do that so that I wouldn't have to worry about like painting over wet paint but I do want to pull those spikes out just I think I'm losing the yellow on that but that's okay it's all information for next time and I want to kind of bring let me tilt this again mm-hmm <laughs> <laughs> it's so wet. I've made my own bed to lie in. I kind of want to take the outline out like this. Kind of stylized. Oops. And just bring it out from the side a little bit. Yeah, I think that's kind of fun. I'm excited to keep exploring that and learning about how to depict these, but for a first pass, it was really, really fun. And especially the inside is super fun to paint. Oh, interesting. I don't like horror scary movies either, but the plot of Parasite sounds intriguing. Maybe I'll wait for it to come out on DVD. It's cool to watch movies from different countries. Yes, absolutely. It is. Uh, subtitles are great. Um, it's on Amazon streaming right now. And I, I think I wouldn't call it a horror movie as much as a thriller, if that makes sense. I think it's definitely in the thriller category. <laughs> okay, well, I'm super pleased with how these turned out um, for a first go, and um, I'll definitely be practicing some more pomegranates as we go. 
Um, I know this was a short one, but thank you guys for joining me on this. I'm excited to get back into the swing of live streaming. I'll be sure to let you know when our next one is going to be, hopefully very soon. Um, and I hope that you have a wonderful Friday and a wonderful weekend. And uh, I'm just so grateful for you guys coming and chatting with me. Yeah, thank you. Bye. <laughs>